This is News 4 New York with Ralph Penza and Carol Jenkins. Good evening all around the world. John Lennon's fans bowed their heads in silence today. Yes, they mourned his death in silence and in song. Thousands in New York Central Park, many thousands more across the nation and the world, marking a 10-minute silent vigil at 2 o'clock local time, wherever the Lennon fans happen to be. The silence falling also in Chicago, Philadelphia, Philadelphia Miami, Memphis, really Detroit, and other cities. A report now on the Central right Park observance from John Hammer. The silence was almost total here in Central Park this afternoon except for the sound of the helicopters circling above. Every human being, maybe as many as 200,000 who had gathered here to pay silent tribute to John Lennon did exactly that. There was not even the sound of a dog barking or a baby crying, which frankly was in evidence just before the tribute began. Then at 2 o'clock, the recorded music which had filled Central Park was shut off, and the silent vigil began. The silent vigil, the prayers for John Lennon's soul, as requested by his widow Yoko Ono, ended after 10 minutes, as did simultaneous tributes around the world. I talked with some of those gathered about their thoughts during the silent period. A little bit of my life died with him today. I um, prayed for his soul, as Yoko asked. He believed in peace, you know, and what can I say? Just look around you, it tells it all. And I'd like to see, hopefully, maybe gun control could be the result of this so that death won't be totally in vain. I was also more curious about little ones really knowing who John Lennon was, how much of his impact from the 60s went back like to eight-year-olds and, you know, nine-year-olds, if, if they still knew who he was. At the silent period, I thought if he were here, he'd be happy, and, you know. In Central Park, John Habrick, News 4 Manhattan. This is Reggie Harris at the Dakota, where a crowd of several thousand stood quietly even before the vigil began. And as the 10 minutes of silence continued, only the beating of helicopters could be heard. One person later put it like this, nothing moved but the traffic lights. When the silence was over, thousands from the band shell joined those here in the street, just standing, apparently hoping for a glimpse of Yoko Ono. And as they waited, some showing the peace sign, others the flag, they talked of what John Lennon's life meant and what his death means to them. I was 13 when the Beatles first came, and they kind of represented the beginning of my adolescence. And even though I've been trying hard to put off ending it, I feel like this is sort of an end to it. I remember when uh, Kennedy was shot, John Kennedy, and I was young then, I didn't understand it, you know. But in my lifetime, this man has offered me more than any president that, you know, that I've come across in my lifetime. Yeah. It's also time for us to think how fortunate that we were, that we lived in a time when he was here and we could share what he brought to the world and that in itself something to be thankful for. The crowd continued to stay even through a brief snowfall until about a quarter to five when the small core that was still here suddenly broke and left. And as they walked away, many could be heard again saying, the dream is over. I'm Reggie Harris, News 4, Manhattan. In John Lennon's native Liverpool, England, more than 20,000 mourners gathered for a memorial concert coming from all over Britain and from other West European countries. They flooded into a square in the heart of Liverpool, many of them too young to remember the Beatles when they shot to fame in the early 60s. The event was marred by chaos when a band that was playing Lennon songs switched to some other rock music. Angry crowds swarmed onto a makeshift stage and in the process about 100 people were injured, but none seriously. The Liverpool concert ended with a silent 10-minute candlelight vigil as well. Ralph? As for the accused killer of John Lennon, it was revealed today by his lawyer that Chapman had not eaten for the past two days, fearing that inmates at Rikers Island would poison his food. Chapman stopped eating after he spotted a death threat against him scrawled on a wall at the prison. But at four this afternoon, Chapman ate his first meal since Friday. At Rikers Island, Chapman is being guarded around the clock. 
Coming up, Polish farmers demand their own union. And a New York City official goes on national TV with economic advice for President-elect Reagan. We'll have that for you next on News 4 New York. Stay with you. Tonight, News 4 New York is sponsored by Concord Watches.